Looking for a stylish, fun to drive family hatchback with engaging performance and impressive efficiency? Is the 10th generation Honda Civic still worth considering? Let's find out. It's fair to say that the Honda Civic is the new car equivalent of a Time Lord. Since its launch in 1972, 50 years at the time of this recording, it has metamorphosized from a city car into a super mini, then into a small hatchback, and now this family hatchback body style adopted by the 10th generation model. This version arrived in 2016 and it immediately stood out from the crowd with stylish looks, generous cabin space, and an engaging drive. It was offered with a choice of two petrol VTEC engines plus the Honda Sensing Advanced Safety Suite for the first time. In 2020, the Civic received a range of updates comprising exterior styling enhancements, improvements made to the infotainment system and high quality materials to enhance the cabin's premium feel, plus the introduction of this Sportline model that we have here for you today. So with the new 11th generation model on the horizon, is this 10th generation version still a good option in the segment? And how does it compare to rivals like the VW Golf, Ford Focus and Audi A3. We'll explore all this in today's review, but before we do, you can click that pop-up banner above to head over to our website and browse the latest special offers on the Honda Civic, and make sure to subscribe for more in-depth vehicle reviews. With the 10th Gen Civic, Honda set out to deliver a marriage of distinctive design, sporty styling, and versatile practicality to stand out from rivals. And I think it's a move that paid off well. This is still a very attractive motor in 2022. The exterior design adopts dramatic lines and a muscular stance that gives it a uniquely sporty and imposing look on UK roads. These traits are further complemented by this Sportline model's design cues inspired by its performance-focused sibling, the Type R, namely the front and side skirts and gloss black alloy wheels. The front end possesses a clean and aerodynamic look. You get LED headlights and LED daytime running lights as standard, and I love how they merge into this symmetrical gloss black front grille with the Honda badging prominently displayed. At the side, we get a greater look at the Civic's athletic curves and dramatic lines, embellishments you'd expect to see on a sports car, certainly not a family hatchback. As standard, you get 16 inch alloy wheels, but if you upgrade to the next trim up, SR, you get 17 inch sporty shark grey wheels and with this Sportline model we have high gloss black alloy wheels adding dynamic feel to the overall design. On all but standard models you get body coloured door mirrors with indicators on the side. They're electrically adjustable from inside the cabin and they're heated as well perfect for a winter's morning. Part of the 10th generation Civic's imposing look is that it's longer, wider and lower than any of its predecessors. At 4,518 millimetres in length it is longer than the A3 Focus and Golf. It's also wider than those cars at around 2,070 millimeters, but it sits lower than the Focus and Golf. Interestingly, the 11th generation Civic is slightly longer than this version as the wheelbase has been extended by around 35 millimeters or so to accommodate more space inside the cabin. And we'll hop inside later on in the review to see exactly why Honda made this decision. The height of the car has also been reduced by around 25 millimeters or so with the new Civic, which could compromise headroom inside, especially considering that it adopts the same sloping roof line. The rear end is overtly more athletic and sporty than the front, and I think the key giveaway here is this prominent spoiler that harkens back to Honda's sporting heritage. Accompanying this are the bulky tail-like clusters, aerodynamically designed air vents, and gloss black rear diffuser with this Sportline model. With the new Civic, Honda has slightly dialed back the extravagance of the exterior design with a sleeker body profile and cleaner lines. Which look do you prefer? I'll be intrigued to know your thoughts in the comments. Right, after all, this is a family hatchback, so how much stuff can you fit in the boot? 
let's take a look. So the Temp Gen Civic offers a 478 litre boot capacity. Now that's cavernous compared to the VW Golf's 380 litres and the Ford Focus's 375 litre boot spaces. Now if you opt for the 1.5 litre petrol option, which we'll talk more about later on, this does reduce the capacity down to around 420 litres or so. And if you want more space than what's offered as standard, then you'll need to consider the four-door Civic Saloon that increases capacity to around 519 litres. As it stands, this is enough space for four to five of these small carry-on suitcases. Surprising considering how low down the Civic sits, that there is a slight loading lip to lug over and that's due to the deep entrance of the boot. But thankfully we have a wide opening, which means a loading and unloading those heavy and awkwardly sized items is an absolute breeze. And once they're in, they fit nice and snug. There's a couple of hooks and anchor points to attach objects to the floor that I like to roll around. And if you move this suitcase out of the way and lift up the fake floor, you're rewarded with a capacious amount of underfloor storage. Really impressive, perfect for all your bits and bobs you want to keep out of the way of prying eyes. You also get this retractable tonner cover, which feels a bit cheap. The material's flimsy and it's nowhere near supportive enough to hold heavier objects. Now, if you'd like to extend the boot capacity, you can do by folding the rear bench in a 60-40 arrangement and that's quite easy to do from the back here you just lift up the levers and give the bench a push and it will fold down for you that extends capacity to around 828 litres or 770 litres if you go with the 1.5 Sportline model now great news is there's no gap in the floor for those objects to fall down bad news it's not completely flat as you can see there's a slight incline there that means loading those longer objects into the rear cabin space isn't as convenient as it would be with a completely flat floor sadly and only because i love it so much you can't get the civic with the honda magic seat configuration like the jazz and other honda models this allows you to fold up the rear bench like cinema chairs to fit a small bike or even some house plants into the rear space it's a great feature unfortunately this was a necessity as it allowed Honda's engineers to move the fuel tank to underneath the front space, offering that sportier driving position. But for me, this has come at the compromise to practicality. Right then, does the Civic have the performance to back up the sporty looks? It's time to get behind the wheel. So the 2020 model update gave us two different powertrain options to choose from and unfortunately the frugal 1.6 litre diesel unit was dropped completely from the lineup. There's also the punchy 2 litre petrol engine found under the bonnet of the hot hatch type R variant. I won't be talking about this too much in today's review as it's very much its own beast and different to the regular Civic. If you'd like to see coverage of that, leave a comment down below. What we have with this test drive Civic is the 1 litre VTEC turbo powertrain. This comprises a 1 litre turbocharged three cylinder petrol engine generating 124 horsepower and 200 newton metres of torque for an okay 0 to 62 time of 10.8 seconds. Now that sounds slow for a family hatchback and that's because it is, but when you're behind the wheel of the Civic it feels surprisingly rapid and that's because it accelerates really well in those lower rev ranges and because you fi you'll find yourself not having to change gear as often as similar manual transmissions in other family hatchbacks you can build up to speed really quickly on a dual carriageway however if acceleration is important to you then the Civic is slower than the equivalent one litre petrol versions of the VW Golf and the Audi A3 and that's just due to how much heavier this car is this Civic can be had with either seven speed CVT automatic transmission mission or six-speed manual and we have the latter with this test drive model I absolutely love the implementation of the manual gear shift it's easy to use it's responsive and engaging and due to how high up the gear shift is positioned on the center console you can rest your arm in a very comfortable position on the central armrest it's more responsive and refined than the old VTEC engines and because the torque appears lower down in the rev range you'll find yourself not needing to change gear as much so unless you absolutely need CVT automatic I recommend you avoid it completely and just go with this manual gearbox it'd be more than 
than suitable for the majority of motorists. Impressive fuel economy has been a long-standing trait of the Civic lineup, and that's certainly the case with this 10th generation model. You can achieve up to 47.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle, still very impressive when compared to the majority of its rivals. Though it's worth noting if you go with the larger alloy wheels that you get with SR models upwards, this will reduce just slightly. CO2 emissions are pretty average for a family hatchback. Output's around 140 grams per kilometer on the combined cycle, and that places it in a mid-range benefiting kind or company car tax band for 2022 to 2023. If you want to take advantage of more tantalizing company car tax savings, then perhaps consider the new Civic, that's a hybrid system. We'll talk about that in just a moment, or perhaps even a plug-in hybrid variant for one of this car's rivals, namely the VW Golf. Next up the ladder, we have the more powerful 1.5 litre VTEC turbo powertrain that's only available with Civic Sport models. This boosts performance to 179 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque for a much improved 0 to 62 time of 8.2 seconds. That's much more like it. Now you'd think that the increased performance would actually compromise fuel economy, but that's certainly not the case. You can still achieve an impressive 46.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. Also, CO2 has been slightly reduced over the one liter petrol option. Uh, manual outputs 137 grams per kilometer, while CVT automatic outputs 150 grams per kilometer. Now, I won't be talking about the diesel unit as that's been dropped from the lineup, but I will be addressing the new Civic's hybrid system so we can see how it compares to this 10th generation model. So the new Civic is the latest Honda model to use the brand's eHEV hybrid powertrain technology. And this comprises a two liter mild hybrid petrol unit that works in much of the same way as it does with the Jazz, CRV, and HRV. It has a small battery pack, and this is continuously recharged using the engine, electric motors, and through regenerative braking to maximize fuel efficiency and performance. This means unlike a plug-in hybrid model, you won't need to plug in the new Civic to charge, but the downside of this is you won't be able to run it off pure electric power for particularly far. This system is equipped with technology called the Intelligent Multi-Mode Drive, and this automatically switches between three different driving modes on the fly to maximize efficiency. When setting off and stand still and cruising at low speeds around town, the car will be in EV drive mode, whereby it will purely run off the power stored in the battery pack. For the majority of its time, it's going to be in hybrid drive mode, whereby the engine and the electric motors share the bulk of the work. It will switch into this mode when accelerating at speed, and any excess power will be re-diverted back into the battery to top it up. And then we have engine drive mode, whereby it will just run off the engine like a conventional combustion-powered model. And like the other hybrid Honda models, I have every reason to believe that the transfer of torque between these modes will be incredibly smooth making for a very relaxing driving experience. The new Civic has two electric motors powering the front wheels and these generate 180 horsepower and 315 newton meters of torque for a 0 to 62 time of around 8 seconds depending on the specification. Fuel economy has been greatly improved thanks to the hybrid system. It's expected to deliver up to 60 mpg on the combined cycle and CO2 emissions have also reduced to around 110 grams per kilometer placing it in a more appetizing benefit in kind band. Unlike this pure petrol version, the new Civic has regenerative braking, allowing you to harvest energy back into the battery pack that would otherwise be lost through deceleration and braking. You can adjust the intensity of this using the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. If you'd like to see how this works in practice, then we have more Honda hybrid reviews coming to the channel soon. Click the pop-out banner up there to go ahead and watch our latest review. Back to the 10th generation Civic, there's two driving modes that you can select manually. Econ mode adjusts the air conditioning and throttle response to maximize fuel efficiency. And EX and EX Sportline variants get the adaptive damper system that constantly controls the front and rear dampers according to road condition, speed, and steering operation. There's two modes here. Dynamic enhances handling response for optimal body control, perfect for winding down a country road. And normal offers the best compromise between a comfortable drive and handling performance. We also have the idle stop mode where the vehicle will shut off when it comes to a halt in order to help maximize fuel economy. In terms of suspension, ride quality is largely settled. Around town, the 16 or 17 inch alloy wheels do a great job at absorbing the impact of light under 
regulations. Due to how low down the vehicle is though, when you go over a large hump or bump, that certainly sends a thump throughout the cabin and at higher speeds when you drive over a harsh abrasion, again, that does disrupt the body structure. On the bright side, handling feels very confident. The car responds well to slick gear changes and quick changes in direction, which makes this a very engaging motor for swinging around tight corners and bends. During those confident maneuvers, the Civic grips the road very nicely indeed thanks to its low center of gravity and the steering is nicely weighted. It's not too soft and it's not too hard, providing a nice amount of feel and feedback from the front wheels. Brief note on the pedals, you get aluminum pedals with Sportline variants. They nicely line up with your feet and with the accelerator, it's easy to gauge how much throttle you need to provide. The brake is nice and firm. I just have issues with the clutch. It feels a bit too springy. Sadly, noise is an area where the temp generation Civic lacks refinement compared to its key rivals. Due to the car's low riding stance, road noise from the 16 or 17 inch alloy wheels make their way into the cabin, even at slower speeds. Engine noise is also quite prominent, particularly at the lower rev ranges. They also sense some vibration throughout the cabin too. All this means is that the 10th generation Civic simply isn't as peaceful or comfortable to drive around town. Having said that, there's less vibration with the 1.5 litre petrol unit, and this issue is likely to be remedied altogether by the new Civic's hybrid system, as at slower speeds, the car will be driving using electric power. What's visibility like? Well, you sit low down in the Civic, but thanks to the great seat adjustability, you get a great view over the bonnet. Side mirrors are nice and wide, and I'm very impressed with the view at the back window, though it's slightly compromised by the rear spoiler. Over the shoulder view isn't brilliant, thanks to a chunky rear cluster, but thankfully to make up for this, front and rear parking sensors come as standard. When the Civic was originally tested by Euro NCAP back in 2017, it was awarded four stars in light of poor child protection. Honda went away and made some modifications to the side curtain airbag, and when the model was retested a few years later, it received the maximum five star rating. Indeed, the Honda Sensing Suite of advanced driver assistance features comes as standard across all grades with the Civic and this includes forward collision warning, lane keep assist and departure warning, adaptive cruise control with the intelligent speed limiter and traffic sign recognition. EX and EX Sportline variants get an additional safety feature, blind spot monitoring with a cross traffic monitor so when vehicles pass closely by on either the left or right hand side the vehicle will alert you of this via an illuminated signal on the side mirrors. Honda's warranty is pretty standard, three years or 90,000 miles, whichever comes first. By comparison, Hyundai and Toyota offer five-year guarantees and Kia has its class-leading seven-year warranty. With the new Honda Civic, the hybrid system is covered for up to five years or 90,000 miles. When it comes to parking your Civic, you get front and rear parking sensors as standard, though if you climb up the range and go for an SR model upwards, you get a rear view camera, which I'll demonstrate for you now. It's not the clearest display in the world, as you can see there, it's quite grainy, but those guidelines are responsive and they do a great job at helping you maneuver into a tight gap. The 10th generation Civic possesses a more refined and upmarket cabin than its predecessor. And while it's not particularly flashy, I do appreciate the understated look in 2022. The angular center console possesses some great material variety, such as the subtle use of chrome wrapped around the air vents. This textured wood effect adding somewhat of a sophisticated sophisticated feel and the robust plastics dotted throughout, though if you look down lower there are some cheaper plastics hiding out of plain sight. As standard with SE and SR trims you get black fabric seats, but if you climb up the range to the EX or EX Sportline models you get black leather seats. Sportline adds red stitching on the side bolsters as well as on the steering wheel, gear shift lever and door panels. It's a really nice effect. To enhance the sporty feel of the drive, the Civic offers a low seating position Position, but thanks to the good amount of adjustment, especially with top grade models that give you eight way electric adjustment for the driver's seat, it's really easy to find a comfortable position for you. You can't raise yourself particularly high. This is in fact the highest point right now, but that's giving you a great view of the road ahead. If you are six foot or over, you have long legs, you'll be pleased to know that you can come down pretty far, even further than this, 
here we go and you can come back quite far as well extending leg room to a great degree now if i'm nitpicking i would have liked to have seen adjustable lumbar support come as standard it's locked behind sr trims upwards for me they're absolutely essential for longer journeys as i have started to experience some discomfort driving the civic for longer than an hour also with ex trims upwards you get heated front seats perfect for cold winter mornings admittedly it can feel quite cramped in the front here due to the low driving position the way the windscreen slopes down towards the bonnet and the rear view mirror which is practically staring me in the face but it seems that the new civic remedies these issues with a much wider windscreen providing greater all-round visibility it's also good that with the ex trims upwards you get a glass sunroof letting a fair a bit of light into the cabin and bringing it alive. SR trims and beyond offer a leather steering wheel, feels nice and grippy, adds somewhat of a premium feel to the cabin and it's been particularly hot today but my palms haven't been sliding down it. Behind the wheel we have a tiny five inch driver display, shows very basic key information that you want to see while on the move. You can have it display your fuel economy figures to see how efficient you're being on your journey. The new Civic upgrades this screen to a larger 10.2 inch full color driver display with top grade models that has much more functionality and features. With entry level SE grades, you don't even get an infotainment system, just a five inch monitor with one USB port. That's a pretty dire affair and you don't want to put yourself through that. So do climb up the range to SR trims beyond because you get the Honda Connect infotainment setup. That comprises a seven inch display with DAB radio, Bluetooth, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, plus the Garmin satellite nav system. However, unfortunately, the temp generation civil doesn't benefit from Honda's upgraded infotainment and it is certainly starting to show its age. It's laggy to navigate around, your inputs take longer than necessary to register, confusing menus mean it's difficult to find essential features and the graphics could most certainly be sharper. On the brightest side we do have physical shortcut buttons on the side of the display to get to essential menus. Complementing the infotainment is a standard eight speaker setup. Upgrading to EX trims gives you an 11 speaker premium audio system Sounds great, but a lot of the speakers are positioned behind me, so it sounds like I've gone to Glastonbury, but instead of facing towards the stage, I'm looking at the food in the toilets. On all but entry level trims, you get dual zone climate control, and it's always great to see that these are controlled via physical buttons and dials. In fact, with the 2020 update, Honda added more buttons to the centre console following customer complaints that there were far too many functions incorporated into the display. I'd love to see more manufacturers follow suit with with similar decisions. EX trims rewards you with a wireless phone charging pad beneath the display. And if you'd like to mirror your smartphone apps onto the screen to effectively bypass Honda's laggy software, you can do, but you've got to go hunting for the specific USB port. Now, it genuinely took me around 10 minutes to find this, but it's hidden out of plain sight. It's located beneath the center console in its own compartment, where you'll also find an HDMI port and a 12 volt socket. While the overall layout of this cabin is very similar with the new Civic, that model receive substantial technology upgrades. You'll benefit from a larger nine inch central touchscreen and this has been moved up the dashboard making it easier to see while on the go. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is now a wireless connection and with top grade advanced models you'll get a 12 speaker Bose sound system which I imagine sounds much more immersive. Working our way down the center console the home of the charging pad also acts as a useful cubby perfect storage for your keys. Beneath that we have the driver mode select buttons on the left hand side of the gear selector and on the right you'll find the electronic parking brake. Then we have a single cup holder spacious enough for my bulky bottle and a sizable center compartment. In fact you can uh, put the armrest back like that, lift it up and it rewards you with a deep and cavernous space where you'll also find a USB port for charging your phone. The great thing about EX models upwards is you get smart keyless entry so you can pop these anywhere in the car and still start the vehicle. There's other sizable cubby holes dotted around the interior such as the glove box, fairly large for a family hatchback, absolutely eating up the manuals plus all your other bits and bobs. And the door bins are pretty cavernous too, they just about fit my bulky bottle but at a squeeze. 
In the rear, there's plenty of room for two adults, but if you'd like to squeeze another one in the middle, that will create an uncomfortable environment. Unfortunately, I do have issues with headroom. So I'm 5'8", and if I sit up, I'm nearly touching the roof lining, as you can see. This means taller passengers who are six foot or over may just touch the top and will have to sit in an awkward, slanted position like so to avoid colliding with the roof. Thankfully, legroom is plentiful. I can pretty much stretch out all the way. I feel very comfortable comfortable and my knees don't come too high. There's also issues with getting kid seats into the back. Doors open quite wide, around 65 degrees, but due to the raised sills and the low roof line, you'll have to pivot and maneuver it in somehow. But once you've completed that challenge, you're rewarded with isofix fittings on either rear seat. If there's no middle passenger, you can fold down the middle seat and that will reward you with a couple of cup holders and a makeshift armrest. There's one small and one large cup holder. The larger one is more than enough space for that bulky bottle. Other niceties include large pouches on the back of the front seats. Again, an ideal place for a bottle as well as other bits and bobs. EX trims give you heated rear seats and you can control these via the cluster down here. But if we remove these, there's nothing else to show here. You don't even get a cubby or a USB port. That's a shame. And the door bins are nowhere near as spacious as they are in the front. You only ha really have enough room for a small 250 mil bottle. What's it like in the middle? Let's slide over and find out. Well, comfort-wise, it's actually not too bad. The seat behind me is quite spongy, absorbing my back well. I'm not colliding with the plastic from the cup holders, which is great to see. Issues, though, are with legroom. I don't really have anywhere to put my feet. I'll have to encroach on the other rear passenger's space because I have to straddle this large central tunnel. The 10th generation Civic is available with five different trim levels. Let's talk about those now, as well as pricing. There used to be a very basic entry level S version, which was dropped soon after launch because it was a bit stingy and nobody wanted it. Thankfully, the standard offering now, SE, is far more tantalizing. Prices start from around £22,795 and you get LED headlights with high beam support, front and rear parking sensors and the Honda Sensing Safety Suite. The next version, SR, is my trim of choice as you get just the right amount of equipment for a decently priced package. It will set you back around £24,100 and for this you get LED front fog lights, rain sensing wipers, larger 17 inch alloy wheels and rear privacy glass for the passenger windows. If you want that beefier 1.5 litre petrol engine then you'll have to go with the sport trim from £26,600, mainly cosmetic enhancements. With this version you get gloss black alloy wheels, a central dual exhaust and exterior sport garnishes to the front and rear and side sills. If you want to start maximising your specification then do consider the EX trim for around £27,100. You get leather interior with heated front and rear seats, power adjustable lumbar support for the passenger seat, plus that glass sunroof. And if you like everything you've seen from this review car, then go with EX Sportline from £28,100. The new 11th generation Civic is offered with three different trim levels, Elegance, Sport and Advance. So if you need a hand finding your perfect Civic, get in touch with our team via the link below. So should you buy, lease or finance a 10th generation Honda Civic? Well, if you're shopping in the family hatchback segment and you want something that's a little bit different from the competition, that still offers a great level of practicality, then this is most certainly worth adding to your list. The looks certainly aren't for everybody, but I find them very attractive and it's a car that still stands out from the crowd. I love that low driving position, which provides a lot of engagement and doesn't too harshly compromise visibility. Boot space is brilliant, it outperforms many of its rivals in this category. The Honda Sensing Suite is fantastic, many of these features come as standard across all grades. And at the end of the day, the Civic is a really fun family car to drive, whether you're quickly nipping to the shops around town, winding around a country road, or putting your foot down on the motorway. Any cons? Well, I'm not a fan of that infotainment system. It's a bit laggy and unintuitive. Honda seems to know that though, as the new Civic makes some key strides in this area. Restrictive headroom in the back is gonna create some discomfort for passengers over six foot tall. And especially if you try and fit three passengers in the back, well, they're just really not going to like you. This certainly isn't the quietest family hatchback on the market. It lets a lot of road noise seep into the cabin. 
and this high spec grade, the Sportline variant, even though I love the exterior design, it just doesn't offer the best value for money compared to the competition. But overall, I think the temp generation Civic has aged really well over the years. And if you're not quite ready to make that leap to hybrid power, well, this is certainly still worth a look. If you need a hand finding your perfect Civic, then just get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialists via the number in the banner below. We'll be happy to explore your options to find the spec that perfectly meets your needs. Alternatively, just click the pop-up banner up there to book a quick call at a convenient time. And if you'd like to browse the latest offers on this car, click the link in the description to head over to our website. If you found this final look at the Tev Gen Civic helpful, guys, do give the video a thumbs up. That really helps us out. Also, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with our in-depth vehicle reviews. And once you're on board, make sure to click the notification bell down there so you won't miss our latest uploads. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Take care and safe driving.